Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on X-Plane. Um, today we're taking the Polis A346 and we're uh, flying it from London Heathrow to Boston. Now, I'm normally not a big fan of doing long hauls um, in X-Plane because of one feature and unfortunately I've tried talking to Tolis and many others as well to adding this feature, but they're, or let's say option, but they're very stubborn. Normally they're very good with customer service, but in that regard they're very stubborn for some reason and that is auto step climb. And that's really the only reason, or not the only reason, but one of the many reasons um, why I don't do long hauls on x -Plane, because I want that feature. Um, now you're wondering, now that they always come up with excuses, for example, uh, Gliding Huey's excuse was that um, there's no big difference in fuel consumption by stepping to out 2,000 feet or 4,000 feet. And I did a per perfect comparison. It, if I were to fly from um, I think Munich to San Francisco, it would be about six tons of fuel, six metric tons, that is, um, more for no step climb than with step climb. Now you're probably saying oh, that's not a much, but that's, I mean, that's sometimes a whole flight for the A320. So it is quite a bit of fuel and it saves you on weight. Now that's not the whole reason as well why I would want to do a step climb. Um, the, whole, the reason also is if you're flying in China, you have to fly in metric, uh, altitudes, which means you will be at flight level 351, for example, um, instead of an even number. But then uh, when you once you exit the airspace, you're supposed to step climb to a regular altitude, for example, 350 or 360, depending on what tr direction you're flying in. And that's also why I think auto step climb is so important, but uh, they're being very stubborn. Um, there are other things I don't like too much about the aircraft, but overall I've actually enjoyed quite a bit, so I'm not, you know, um, like I said, it's probably one of the best uh, long haul aircraft you can uh, buy in X-Plane right now, but um, still got its interesting quirks. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to start with the master switches all off, most like your normal, weather, radar, and predictive winter system are off, gears down, wipers are off, and batteries at least 25 and a half volts. Your lighting is all off, so we can turn on the external power. One and two. One we'll power up the instruments. Did the use and wait for the aircraft to be powered up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do an AP fire test. Finally, in this aircraft, you can actually click and drag. Oop, that's the wrong fire test. My bad. Um, you can actually click and drag so you can actually look around when the test is being commenced, which is nice. Um, definitely something needed in the A321 and 19. Sorry if the frame rate is a little bit bad, that's just Heathrow for you. Um, yeah, kind of unfortunate, but um, it is what it is. So we'll do a quick scan here. No white lights, fault no lights are normal. No white lights, fault lights are normal. No white lights and the cargo temperature is fine as well. We now do some cockpit lighting. Um, to start A cars as well. We'd initialize A cars, but the aircraft doesn't simulate A cars yet. That's where they're being stubborn too with Hoppy. Um, but um, their reasoning is that they don't want to cons uh, distribute third party plugins, so to speak, um, in their own aircraft when it's not theirs. When in fact, a lot of people are saying that that's not how Hoppy works. And Hoppy is a server. And I mean, they have a point. But A. It is what it is. So um, either Tolis will make their own servers <laughs> for eight cards, or I don't know. We'll see. Um, but it looks like we won't be getting it anytime soon. So that's really, really sad. Um, but yeah, bad Tolis. <laughs> Next, we do the FMS uh, or FMG, uh, FMGS uh, initialization. Once we did eight cards, normally your flight plan would already automatically populate. But since it doesn't do that, since we don't have eight cards, uh, we're going to do it ourselves. We're just going to check that the aircraft type is correct, the engine type is correct, which, I mean, there's only one engine type for this aircraft. The era cycle is up to date. Go to init page, and this is where normally things would be populated, but of course, no A cars, no flight sim uplink. Uh, flight sim, I mean flight plan uplink, sorry about that. So, Echo Golf Lima Lima to Boston. And we do have a flight plan exported though, so that's fine. Uh, um, and our alternate is JFK. Flight number is Virgin 
to Alpha. Passengers today were expecting for 40. Us in the next 180, I believe. Typical for this aircraft. 80. And crew level initially is 340. Um, 7 degrees. Alright, 7 degrees it is. So minus 8. Ooh, minus 60. In here. Our initial tropo pause will also plug in. That's our top of cruise tropo pause that we'll put in. 359er. Plug that in. Okay, FNG S initialization is completed. We then do a recall check. Everything is normal. I believe in the real aircraft there would be a few faults in there, but that's okay. We're not aligned and aircraft is not running really. Um, that's okay. Um, we'll do our preliminary um, airfield data check. So get some ADAS and get our weather information, which means our QNH here is 1006. And that's all set. Check our oxygen pressure is checked, hydraulic quantities are good in the green, and internal quantities are all what we require. Flaps up and and the lever as well. Spoiler disarmed. And um, we can do a brake check. I mean, there's no auto gate. No. We'll just do off and we'll check the brakings. And of course, that automatically arms. That's kind of a weird logic. Um, okay, ground contact ground. Make sure that we can repressurize the blue hydraulic system so we can uh, pressurize the uh, simulator. And there we go. Okay. So let's load up the aircraft. So we'll go um, aircraft. We have 440. We're pretty full. Done. Alright, so now we do the overhead scan. So cruise supply coming to auto, ground control on. Ultra are normal, everything's good. Set the captain, all no lights. ERS is one, two, and three. Auto one. The signs can come on auto arm. Everything else is set. Everything's good. Auto effect. Check, check, check. Go battery check. All three bats off. Why is it pressure? Oops. But Low 60 amps within 10 seconds. That's checked. That looks good. Go pumps. To auto. Right. Lights, everything looks good here. And we'll do a CVR test. Right. Head down here. This is set to GPS. Everything else looks good and normal. Um, pressure is in the green. Everything is on as it should be. Alright, back down here. HFF, VHF1. And two, interphone and cabin. At the four, everything else looks good here. And that's good. Pressurization should be 330, so our current elevation as well as auto. And should it should already know, since we did the FMGC pre-initialization, it should know what our landing elevation should be. That's checked as well. Status, fine. Our servers are idle. There we go. On all that is checked. Good to go. Go. Alright, next is the FMGC. We're going to go to IRS in it, and it is a longer flight, so we're going to um, tune the correct latitude and longitude. Let me just see if they provide them here. Normally they do at the gate. Oops. But I guess Aerosoft did not go that far. Unless Heathrow just doesn't do it, that, that could also be true. So, confirm alignment. And we can now go to the init B page. We'll put in our fuel, 98.4. It's already done fueling, so we can plug it in. 
and our zero fuel weight is 233.7. Plug in the zero fuel weight center of gravity later, as we're simulating that we didn't get the load sheet just yet. Alternate, alternate fuel, 7.7. .7. Plug that in. We've got an extra 20.5 tons, so 2 hours and 53 minutes. Takeoff weight of 330.9, and that that's even less than what we were planning with. That's two, uh, 200 kilograms less. Good flight plan for our departure. Runway 27 right is what we can expect. And I'm going to go ahead and populate this. Hopefully, I don't forget to turn it back off. Um, CBT3F, none, insert. And Boston will put in the arrival, which is Ocean 5. Oh yeah, AJ, so no via AJ. Maybe there is a VN, let me just check. Doesn't look like there is one. All right, so insert, insert for now. And, um, Go. So we'll check the distance here. So time six hours and thirty five minutes apparently, but that is obviously that can change. What we can do is we'll go to init, uh, sorry, to the wind data, and we'll plug in our uh, cruise winds, or sorry, our climb winds, and then our average cruise wind. So first off, two fifteen at forty seven at one hundred. Next phase, we're going to put our crew, average cruise because Tolis, again, a bug, uh, deletes all your wind data that you've entered um, once you hit the cruise and when you step climb as well, which is not cool, but I mean, it is what it is. So 245 at 69 is our average cruise, and it will copy over to everything. So if we check our flight plan again, you can see that our time has increased to 7 hours and 25 minutes. An extra fuel of 26.7. Our ground distance is 2,986 here and 2,987 on our flight plan. So that's pretty good. And yeah, that's really, really good. Go to diff, uh, so the radio, and we now check our charts. So we go to our charts here. Once it loads, there we go. And uh, this is what it looks like. So London. I don't know why it's got the ILS in there. That's weird. London, one nautical mile. Not uh, that's the closest one, and we'll put London on the right as well. What a flight plan! I'm gonna put some fixed information in here. So London, seven miles, and um, two five six. We just did in it, so we just did the wind, go to performance, planning with the flaps three, one six three zero, one six three zero, and one six three zero, condition level is six thousand. Now calculate our data. Flaps three. Um so I uh, will do fifty nine because we're doing packs off. One six three. Oh, whoops, I keep forgetting that. Nine. One six three. One seven three. And one seven eight. Progress echoed off Lima Lima two seven left for our return. Our optimum and all that is checked. All this is good to go as well. Secondary copy. And then Echo Golf Lima Lima as our new destination. Now, here's another thing. Um, the Tola seems to delete your performance data, sorry, your uh, your re speeds and your performance data that you've entered previously. So, I, I don't know why it does that. Um, 169, 163, 173, and I think it was 178.179er. Seven eight. Darn, I was so close. 
178. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. Um, we're going to go to the next page here. Transition level is going to be yeah, 7 0. Our winds. If only we had weather information on our Avi tab. the whole reason why we have it installed. So I might uninstall it again. Not a big fan of Avi tab, but if I ever do VR, then VR, then I'm probably going to use it. So QNH uh, 1006. And our winds are 190 at 16. Okay. That's that. We're going to go to NB to letting us know or reminding us that this is still not complete. And, um, yeah. Now I'll do an FMG S cross check. So, what we'll do is we'll go plan mode on this side, pilot monitoring, load constraints as well. We're just going to step through the flight plan, at least the SID. So, we've got intercept, which is the radial of London that we've put in, then left to Delta 256 Golf, which is the 70 ME of London, and then we turn right um, 60 Kilo with 3,000 feet or above, so between 2,000 and 6,000, Whiskey Oscar Delta, 6,000, 4,000, EDME of CPT, and then CPT. And that's our SID. Next we would also cross check the flight plan and everything else on the data, but I'm gonna go and skip that for that for you guys. So we'll go back to that, back to that. I'm gonna do our glare shield scan. So constraints on this side, VOR, go into tune. Our initial climb here is gonna be 6,000. Go ahead and set it plus 100 because we didn't get clearance yet. And then make sure oxygen is tested but not simulated. Of course it's not. And then climb nav, flight directors, all that good stuff is set. All this is set. Seatbelt signs are on. All that is set. And we are pretty much ready to go to get clearance. Um, is anybody online now? No. So let's pretend we got clearance, which means we'll set 6,000. And um, we're five minutes away from, we're six minutes away from pushing back, so now we can start the APU. All right, logbook security check, checked, checked and entered. Departure briefing is completed. Copy preparation is completed. Cam signs are on, auto, and armed. Adirs are nav, and we can check that, double check that here as well. Nav and less than five nautical miles difference, which is checked. Um, we don't need to deselect any navigates today, so we're good there. Minute B. Um, fuel. 98.4 tons, and it should be balanced. It is. Perfect. ARF 1006 set on all three. Parking brake is on. Go ahead and close the cockpit door. And the locket. Okay. And we'll turn on the APU bleed. So in three minutes we're gonna start a pushback. Um, we did get our load sheet, so let's go ahead and plug that stuff in. I mean, we would normally get our load sheet a bit earlier than that, but um, that's fine. So um, our zero fuel weight in our gravity is twenty one point two. And our zero fluid hasn't changed. Now go to performance and we'll plug in up 3.6, 3.9. There it is. And our speeds haven't changed. And our flex is 59. Reason being, um, I believe from looking at charts, um, at least the A220 charts, um, the flex temperature changes by about, well now it's 56, but it should be 58. Um, the flex temperature changes by about two degrees if you have packed on or off. Um, of course, there are many factors that play into flex temperature, but that's just a general rule that I tend to follow, that if 
when I was 57. Oh, let's make up your mind. Um, so yeah, if uh, normally the plans with packs on when most airlines normally take off with packs off, so I wish they would have an option to force packs off, but they don't. Um, yeah, I always do packs off take off, normally always. And um, if I do that, I just take this flex number and add two to it. That's a little rule, little rule of thumb. So, ready for push, my B can come in on. Acupressure's in the green part, can break a set. Rest ups are idle, we're ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and call the pushback truck. Or pushback, or pushback. Ground to cockpit, please show me where you want to go. I wonder who made that audio. It sounds a little bit like White Cliff Barrett. Ground to cockpit, toe is driving up. I think it is him. So all these slides are armed as well. Good. Um, okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. We have verified the nose wheel steering disengage message. There it is. And we can do the below the line. Take off data is set. Beacon is on. Nose wheel steering disengage is checked. Windows doors and slides closed and armed. Um, Open doors closed and locked. Before start checklist completed. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Starting pushback and you may start engines. So in case you guys don't know, um, the uh, way you start the aircraft here is by starting engines 1 and 2, then 3 and 4. The way you do it though is you start engine 1 first, wait for N3, which is down here, to reach 10%, and then you can start number 2. There we go. Now you just wait for engine one and two to stabilize, and you can start engines number um, three and four. One is stabilized, two is stabilized, so engine number three. Wait for 10% and three. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Disconnecting toes. Stand by. Don't need anti-ice just yet. Um, but we may need it for departure. Like controls, uh, we'll check in a moment. Check full up, down, neutral, left, all right, neutral. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Right. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. The control check complete. Auto brake RTO. We'll wait for the hand signal and then we can start our taxi. After start checklist, the anti ice is off, pitch trim is set, red trim zero, you can set a suspect. We're good to go in those lights, come into taxi, break break off, and let's get out of here. Of course we'll do a brake check once you start moving. Brake check, pressure zero, we're good.
the line and to recruitment to get to your apex or off. The traffic departing runway two seven right. Heathrow traffic, your wings four eight alpha lining up runway two seven right via alpha two. I'm flex fifty nine SRS runway on the thrust is blue. Delta traffic is not in row one two we see that clear on the way down the F Live wheel speed, traffic. 100 knots. Hero traffic speed there, 685, for short, 1, 2 miles, 2, 7 left, Hero.
2000. Then you check those camps and it'll give an auto throttle speed. Then you get down through getting your commemo and landing. No blue. One thousand. Boston traffic, five mile final, runway throw for right.
the landing looked really really hard but it was 330 which is perfect especially in these conditions so it was exactly 333 <laughs> um, so yeah um, something with the camera shake definitely made it look or exaggerated it but that's all right so yeah we t got here in seven hours and 24 minutes pretty good the vlog time is seven hours and 49 minutes and uh yeah And with that, I'm going to say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you all in the very next video. Until then, have yourselves a wonderful day. Peace!